In this video module, we will be going through a Monte Carlo simulation example with NumPy. And in particular, we're going to use or demonstrate the vectorized operations with NumPy and compare that to the traditional programmatic approach. I'm going to use the Jupyter Notebook for the entire project or the entire video module. And the, the Jupyter Notebook itself is available with the module and also in our class repository. Before I talk about the problem, let me just make one Jupyter note here. Notice the, uh, the uh, title cell here. If I open the cell, you can see that this is a markdown cell rather than a code cell. And for those of you who don't know, the Jupyter Markdown language supports LaTeX type equations, and so that makes it a convenient uh, mechanism to display uh, mathematical uh, terms and mathematical descriptions, which is what I've demonstrated here. So it turns out to be quite useful. So this is a problem that I originally got from uh, from the internet, uh, developed by someone named Anthony Sun, and I used with his permission. Unfortunately, this link is no longer active, and I can't find him. Uh, but I do have permission, so I decided I would include it here for completeness. So here's the problem that we're considering. A company is considering a new product. They want to produce and sell a new product under a pure uh, perfect competition market. And so this pure perfect competition market essentially means uh, for us that they can't, the firm can't control the pricing. So it's done completely by the market. The question is whether the firm should produce the product or not. And so in particular, what they're looking for from the Monte Carlo simulation is to uh, assess or to estimate the probability distribution associated with the product. And so this total, pro the probability distribution for the total profit, sorry. And so the total profit is given by the total revenue minus the total cost. And our revenue is the number sold Q times the price sold P minus the number sold times the variable cost or the marginal cost plus the fixed cost for uh, startup. And so again, the total profit is the revenue minus uh, the expenses. Now, since we're trying to predict what will happen in the future, uh, some of these components are variable. Or in other words, we're not exactly sure what's going to happen in the future. So the random variables that we're interested in for this problem are as follows. We're going to assume that the demand is uniformly distributed between 8,000 and 12,000. The selling price is normally distributed uh, with a mean of 10, a standard deviation of 3. The marginal variable cost is normally distributed with a mean of 7 and a standard deviation of 2. And the fixed cost is fixed at 5000 So we're assuming this is something we're going to immediately do. And so we already might potentially have an estimate here. Now, where these values come from, we don't really know. Perhaps marketing or someone just made a guess. Uh, we don't really, we're not really concerned with that for this problem. What we'd like to do is to use Monte Carlo simulation to predict what would happen if the firm were to do this product. So the traditional Monte Carlo approach would be to set up uh, a sampling procedure where I sample a Q, I sample a P, I sample a V, and then I compute total profit. And that computation becomes one replication of our simulation or one potential outcome. And so I replicate that by doing another sample of P, an a Q, another sample of P, another sample of V, and then compute another sample of total profit. So if you think about this over a large number of replications, I'm going through this sampling process in a loop fashion where I sample, 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 solve, save that value, sample, 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 solve, save that value, sample, 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 solve, save that value, and so on. And so that would be the traditional approach that we would take. And when you finish the however many replications you have in your loop, then you would have a vector of realizations of total profit. And that's what you would use to uh, do your analysis. And so we're going to do that same thing but we're going to use NumPy and we're going to do it in a vectorized fashion and show uh, how simple that actually is. So let's do, let's import NumPy and import matplotlib. And you can see the simple vector version of our code here is pretty short. We set the number of observations. And if you have done Monte Carlo simulation or any kind of simulation, you know that the bigger this number is, the better your results are going to be. And it can be difficult to decide how big this number should be. That's not really the focus of this video. Uh, so we're just going to leave it at this uh, value. So we specify the number of replications. And then we sample our three 
uh, components of our total profit. Note that we're using, as I mentioned, we're using the vectorized operation. So rather than doing this in a looping fashion, I'm simply sampling my, what is this number, 500,000? I'm simply sampling my 500,000 observations of P with one function call. I'm similarly, I'm sampling my 5, 500,000 observations of the marginal cost with one function call, and I'm sampling my 500,000 observations of demand with a single function call. It, you can use the numpy help to see the, the parameters here, but it's pretty straightforward uh, from, uh, from the demonstration. So once we have these three, we can use this, these vector, continue to use the vectorized operation by simply applying our cost function. And so if you rearrange this cost function, you can see that you're going to get the demand times the price minus the marginal minus 5,000 by simply rearranging uh, this uh, formula a little bit. And then what we get in a TP will then be a vector of 500,000 observations, which I simply plot the expected value and then use matplotlib to show an example. So let's just do that. You can see that our expected value is 25,072.02. And here is a um, histogram of the uh, to, uh, our estimate of the distribution of total profit. Note that, as I said, if I were to increase this number, let's say, let's double it. So now we have a million, and we run, and it still runs very quickly, right? So we have a million replications, and now we have our new updated cost. And note that we get this speed, this run speed is caused or is a, is a result of using this vectorized arithmetic. And that if you actually did the looping method, uh, you would see a significant slowdown uh, in the operation. The other thing I did is I uh, did some descriptive statistics so that we could get some more information about our problem. So our estimated profit, of course, is the same. I just reprinted it. We also have the standard deviation, uh, the 25th and 75th percentiles, which we would think of as risk parameters for this type of decision. And then finally, I also computed two probabilities, the probability of losing money. In other words, the area to the left of zero here, which is 0.245, and the probability of making more than 100,000, which you can see 100,000 right here, so that's pretty small. Uh, as you see right here, it's a little over 2.2%. Point, uh, and so we can see that I use the standard numpty uh, um, uh, functions for mean standard deviation percentile, uh, and then I use the sum divided by the number of observation uh, to estimate those probabilities. But right here, I'm also using a conditional. So I'm creating a, a mask, total profit uh, has to be less than zero. And so this mask will pull off just those values of total profit that are, meet this condition of being less than zero. And then some will count those because what's the resulting values here will be will just be a true false. So let's take a look at that uh, one, one time here because we haven't really done much of that yet. So let's just look at this one little component here saying TP less than zero. But before I do that, I'm going to just reduce the number of, um, of samples a lot so that we don't get such a big vector. Good thing I remembered that before I actually did it. So we just cut down to 100. And now I'm going to look at those values here. And I'm going to look at this relationship right here. Look at this little expression right here. See TP um, less than zero. And when I execute, you can see that what we end up with is a Boolean array. Uh, of uh, Again, by definition, a Boolean array has true-false values. And what this array is, is the length of the number of observations. So in our case, 100. And the true values are those sample, those replication components where the total profit was less than zero. And so you can see we do the same thing if total profit greater than 100,000. We might have none of those in this case. I'm sorry, that's less than 100,000, greater than 100,000. Yes, it's such a small, oh, there's one right here. So a small probability, we have one of them in, the, uh, in, the, um, in our 100 samples. So you can see, let me get rid of this guy, go back and change it back to our big number, and execute for my million observations. Look at these one more time, and now you can see the results and see how we use the Boolean vectors to simply compute that probability, or estimate that probability, I should say.
So for this problem, that's it. That's our entire Monte Carlo simulation. It was very simple. Again, supported by this vectorized arithmetic uh, to generate the samples and generate them quickly. And then the, um, the um, Boolean mass here greatly simplified this process of, of estimating these probabilities. One thing that you should also try here uh, on your own is use this same code or use similar code to look at the probability distributions associated with our three random variables. And you can see the normal distributions uh, for the price and marginal and the demand. Just something you can experiment with. So the last thing I did in this module is I want to show one thing uh, here. Suppose that we wanted to aggregate the individual arrays into a single experiment. So if you go back and look at how we did this, we generated a price array, we generated a marginal array, a demand array, and a total profit array. So we have four different arrays that store the pertinent values for the simulation run. And so what I demonstrate here is let's create a single uh, numpy array that has the columns associated with the individual arrays. And so we do this by creating four single column arrays. So I have to use the reshape function on my uh, price, marginal, demand, and, t and total profit. And then I just show them here. So you can see that we have a one million row, one column, one million row, one column, one million row, one column, one million row, one column. Let me come back to this one here in just a second. And then we can use the concatenate operation to concatenate the four vectors into one numpy array and then I just show the numpy shape here and then if I want say for example to use the aggregation function to get the mean value of each uh, of each variable you can see that it's really simple for me to um, for me to do that and here's my mean profit and so this one let's see what's the sequence that I did here so this is the price and so we expect that to be around 10 which it is the marginal cost we expect to be around 7, which it is. And the demand we expect to be somewhere around 10, between 8,000 and 12,000. So the mean is going to be, it's going to be 10,000, which of course it is. And so I simply did this to demonstrate how simple it is if we wanted to have a single array that represented the entire expression. Uh, I'm sorry, that represented the entire simulation experiment. Now back to this one cell uh, that I'll just mention and have you look at on your own, is that I use the reshape function here so that I could reshape our one-dimensional arrays so that I could then use the concatenation. This is the second method that uses the new axis feature, the new axis uh, attribute uh, to achieve the same thing. So this is something that uh, you can look at on your own. And so that completes this uh, video module.